بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته القواعد الفقهية the fiqhi rules the legal maxims what is the benefit of studying such science there are a lot of benefits but we will try to mention few of them so that we could have a realization of the importance of such a knowledge one of the benefits is that these fiqhi rules control the different small subjects subtitles sub issues that are in fiqh so a legal maxim a fiqhi rule controls this they are so different of them there are so many different variations of them that for the juror for the scholar studying fiqh would be able to grasp it like deeds or subjects are by their intention this is a rule but you find this rule applicable in all books of fiqh and this would help the juror in controlling these scattered bits and pieces of information when you study the fiqhi rules you will develop an ability to understand fiqh better now if someone does not have any knowledge or practice in sports if he goes to the gym for a year to develop his muscles and to get certain abilities developed in his body agility strength flexibility after one year he would be able to move on to a number of different sports because he had a good training when you study the fiqhi rules you will develop such an ability you will be able to compare apple to apple you've studied this particular fiqhi rule and then all of a sudden a new incident is taking place that is not found in the books of fiqh for example do we have in the books of fiqh any reference to computers or to it networking or to certain types of transactions banking and finance no these are new things okay how can i compare them to the old things how can i know if it's halal or haram without these qawaid al fiqhiyah or fiqhi rules it will be difficult so the more you master them the more capable you are in giving solutions to problems that are existing when you study these fiqhi rules and comprehend them it is essential for people who give fatwa muftis they require this judges in the islamic court require this immensely because it gives them solutions and answers in a very quick fashion so i have a case i'm a judge and two persons are against each other facing each other in front of me i can quickly find the solution to their problem and who's wrong and who's right through remembering and going through the fiqhi rules that i have studied and comprehended also among the benefits of studying these fiqhi rules is that it enables you to see the beauty of islam there are few in words a sentence made of two or three words easy for you to memorize but you can apply this to all aspects or most aspects of the sharia this is easy to memorize it's also an eye opener for you to see the beauty of the sharia and how it all falls under the same umbrella alhamdulillah you can compare things to the others and it enables those who want to study it to study it in chapters because if we want to study intention or niyyah we can study it in all books of fiqh so we can have this chapter of niyyah separate and combine under it all books of the knowledge 
among the benefits of the fiqhi rules or the science of al-qawaid al-fiqhiyya is that it shows you the content of the sharia. Now, there is an intention for sharia. Ah. What do you mean by intention for sharia? Ah? If we look at the prohibition of consuming intoxicants, wine or whiskey or drugs, the ruling in Islam is haram. Why? We will find that the majority of books or chapters dealing with fiqh, you would find that there is justification. There is logic. Isn't that true? Everything in Islam is based on logic, except few things that you may not find the logic behind them, and very, very negligible, maybe 0.01%. If someone tells you what is the justification behind making intoxicants forbidden, even the non-Muslims will tell you, I can tell you the justification. Because you do things that intoxicate you, that embarrass you, embarrass everyone, and then you regret. What is the justification for making zina, fornication, adultery? Why is it haram? Because you do not want it for your sister, or your daughter, or your mother. And you don't want it for your wife. Why do you want it for everyone else, for you is halal? and for all of your sisters and daughters, and you don't want it. You know, by nature, it's wrong. Get married, you have no problem. In Islam, get married twice, get married three times, get married four times. You'll be a sad man, but you can do that if you wish. So there is justification about everything. Why do we have five prayers? Because it connects you to Allah five times a day. Why do we give zakat? It's my money, I made my money. I worked hard, yes, but there are poor people in the community. You have to help them. You don't give the money to sheikhs because then I would have been very rich and I won't have to be here. You give zakat to the poor. You yourself go. You don't give it to me. You give the poor man the zakat in his hand. Oh, beautiful religion. Why do we fast? I get hungry, I get thirsty. Yes, but then you appreciate the ni'mah the favor of Allah Azza wa Jalla and blessing of Allah upon you. And you feel how the hungry people feel. So you do not become arrogant. And this is a form of showing your submission to Allah. So part of the deen, most of it, we find the justification. When you have these al-qawaid al-fiqhiyya, the fiqhi rules, you understand, ah, now, now I know how the whole of the deen falls under this formula or under this statement, which means that it is a perfect religion. It is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Also among the benefits of studying these rules of fiqh or fiqhi rules is that you are capable to compare things together. Islam is not an illogical religion. Things that are comparable have the same ruling. And by applying the fiqhi rules, you understand this. You get someone coming to me and says, I'm only following Quran and Sunnah. MashaAllah, very good, Zakallah khair. You're excellent. That's good. But what do you have? Do you have the equipment? Do you have the tools? He said, no, I don't know Arabic. I don't know usul al-fiqh. I don't know ulum al-Quran. I don't know anything about hadith. But I follow only the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, this is not... Good enough, you have to understand how to understand it. He said, no, no, prove it to me. I said, what's the ruling on drinking wine? He says, haram. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِيجِسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوا So Allah says that wine, gambling, etc., it is an abomination from shaitan. Refrain from it, it's haram. He said, mashaAllah, wine is haram. He says, yes. I said, wine of grapes, or of wheat, or of dates, or of barley. He said, all types of wine. Wine is haram. He said, okay, jazakallah khair. What about whiskey? Whiskey? Hmm. What about beer? What about scotch? Black label, Jack Daniels, vodka, tequila, all of these intoxicants, 
He said, hmm, no, this is not wine. This is halal. Masha Allah, tabarakallah. What about heroin? Is it wine? He said, no, it's not. Cocaine, crack, meth, etc. Marijuana, hashish. He said, no, no, all of this is not wine. So, so it's halal. He said, ah, see, you have a big problem. Because you did not study, you did not learn, you don't have the tools. Once you have studied usul al-fiqh and studied qiyas, analogy, and studied these fiqhi rules, you know that there are things that are similar, definitely they will have the same ruling. This is in Islam. And that is what Umar radiallahu anhu, may Allah peace with him, sent to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, his famous letter in how to judge between people. And he's telling him, Umar is telling both our companions, huh? And the previous question was, in the previous episode, did the companions know? Yes. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, sent to Abu Musa telling him that look and observe. And if you see things similar to their other, then apply the same ruling to them. This is logical. This is part of the logic of the sciences. When you don't have these tools, you will be like our friend there who is now in a bar drinking and smoking drugs and he says, oh, shawl, halal, halal. No, it's not. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, ma askara kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. Whatever intoxicates in large quantity, intoxicates. He did not say wine. Anything that takes your mind off because of intoxication, then very little of it is haram. And our friend there, if he had known, if he studied with the scholars, if he studied the books of fiqh, he would have found it easy. But because he is stubborn and he is ignorant, he says, no, only Quran and Sunnah. No, you have to study Quran and Sunnah properly with the necessary tools. We have a short break. Stay tuned. And inshallah, we'll be right back. <laughs> A light from Allah in the darkness. A guide from Allah in the confusion. A cure from Allah for every sickness. The Quran. Join me, Muhammad Timham, as we study the beautiful passages of the Quran and the great lessons that they contain in Lessons from the Quran. From the Quran. Study about the glorious lessons that connect us to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Lessons from the Quran. Every Thursday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. We are not addicted to dawah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are gonna walk. The 
most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawah Ilallah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawah Ilallah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawah result oriented in Dawah Ilallah next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Among the benefits of studying Al Qawaid Al Fakhiya is that you need them because a lot of the enemies of Islam accuse Islam of being stiff and incompatible because they think it's a smartphone. Every five months you get new software. Would you like to upgrade? And they think that Islam for 14 centuries has not been upgraded. And this is a misconception. Islam is the only compatible religion because it has rules in it. It has auto update, auto upgrade. And part of the upgrade is this science. When you master it, then anything that is new falls under the same categories that were made because these categories were understood from the Quran and the Sunnah. It's not from Tom, Dick or Harry. It is from the Quran and Sunnah. So anything that happens, Alhamdulillah, we find the answer to it in the Quran and in the Sunnah. For example, at the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, was there any knowledge of the existence of the North Pole or the South Pole or the Scandinavian countries? They didn't know that they existed. And we have the five daily prayers. Recognized by what? By the time? People say yes. No. Do we pray five daily prayers by the time, by the watch? How do we know it? By the sun. If you're in the desert, if you're in the jungle, if you're on the airplane, you can tell the time of Salah, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha by observing. Khalas. You look at the sun's location, shadow, the break of dawn, the twilight, redness, and the west, we can tell all five Salah times. Now, the Prophet والسلام, did not tell us that there will be countries that will have six months of daytime. The sun does not set. And other six months, full nighttime, there is no sun. So how can we pray? If you don't have this science, you will be lost. Do we have an origin? He said, yes, we have in Sahih Imam Muslim. The Prophet told us about والسلام, the Antichrist, the Dajjal. And he will spend how many days on earth? Forty days. He was spent forty days. I used to do this in high school. And I say, how many pillars of Islam do we have? They say two. I said, yeah, mashallah, tawarakallah. So don't answer until you are certain. So he will stay forty days. One of them is as long as a year. And the companions ask, "Oh, Prophet of Allah, they left the Dajjal and they're not interested about the Dajjal. They're interested about Salah. Say in the day that is a year long." Shall we pray five prayers only? Because it's a whole year. The Prophet said, no. Pray the prayer of a whole year. But because the sun will take one full year, estimate. What do you mean by estimate? In this case, yes. Now it's time for Dhuhr. Estimation. After two hours, Asr. After three hours, Maghrib. After an hour, Isha. So you estimate each day how long it is, and you pray the five prayers in that estimation. Likewise, the people in Scandinavia. If you can estimate, go ahead. If not, look at the closest country where they have day and night and pray in accordance to their prayer time because they have day and night. So this knowledge, this science gives you the ability to find the rulings of new things. And finally, this science protects you as a student of knowledge, as a juror, as a faqih, as a scholar from contradicting yourself. 
because you may give an answer and after five, 10 minutes, you give a contrary answer to that one because you don't have any rules, no guidance. But when you have mastered the science, you know that these formulas, these regulations, these rules govern whatever you say so you do not conflict with what you had previously said. Do we have any questions? Yes, Sakhi. Sheikh, what is the difference between Sharia and Fiqh? Okay. It's technical. Sharia usually refers to the law. Each religion, they had their own law that may differ from one religion to the other. For example, in the Sharia of Yusuf, peace be upon him, Prophet Yusuf, it was allowed for them to prostrate to one another. As in Surah Yusuf, they all came to him and they prostrated. In our Sharia, it's forbidden. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, when he came from Yemen, the minute he came to the Prophet, he fell prostrating. The Prophet said, what are you doing? Stand up. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, when I went to the people of the book, I saw them doing this with their kings. So I thought that you're the most worthy of doing that. The Prophet said, don't do that. If I were to ask or order someone to prostrate to someone, I would have ordered a woman to prostrate to her husband. But even this is in haram. Sulaiman, peace be upon him, the jinn used to make sculptures and statues in our religion. This is totally prohibited. So sharia can be applied to the word shara or the word of law and legislation. Fiqh is a broader sense. Linguistically is understanding and comprehension, but in a broader sense, it has under its umbrella the sharia, the forms of worship, which is salah, zakat, wudu. No one would say that this is part of the sharia in the sense in the court of law. Though it is sharia in reference to the religion, it's the law of Islam. And fiqh, by the way, has even aqidah under it. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, whomever Allah intends well for him, Allah would grant him the fiqh in religion. See the word used? The Prophet said, man yuridillahu bihi al-khayr, yufaqihhu fi al-deen. He will grant him understanding and comprehension which means that if Allah doesn't want well for you, he will not give you understanding. He will not give you fiqh. And that is why if you see someone depriving himself, tell him, yeah, come, I'll teach you. He said, no, 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 no. Why? Manchester United and uh, Barcelona are playing. I have to go. Subhanallah, you're not allowed to do this. You know that Allah Azza wa doesn't want well for you. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal gently scolded his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very gently, very nicely, very softly, when the blind man came to him and the Prophet wanted the dignitaries of Quraysh to give them da'wah rather than this blind man who's coming. So those who turn away, those who are arrogant, you follow them. And this one who comes, you neglect him. Those who want the religion, want the comprehension, Allah loves them. And those whom Allah does not love them, he will turn them away from it. I hope this answers the question. Second question. Your question, please. Sheikh, you narrated the hadith of Prophet ﷺ that intoxicants in large quantity are also haram in small quantity. So we also know that nicotine and caffeine, they are both also intoxicants. But they are present in tea and coffee. And they are in small quantity. So can we have tea and coffee? First of all, what is present in Coffee and tea is caffeine. And this is not intoxicant. This is an alert 